example, the WordPress backend has changed so much since the very beginning. I've been there since the beginning. <laughs> it has changed a lot. Sections have been added, sections, sections have been removed. The design itself has changed. So like if you're doing training videos, sometimes you have to go back and refilm those kinds of things if you're doing the training. Due, dil due gel diligence is <laughs> equals a happier client. For you, it also means future business and less stress. So uh, when you're giving them a way to uh, learn, you know, they're paying for this product. They want to make money and everything else. But if they don't know how to use it, then they're, then they're spending time how, uh, trying to find their way in the vast you know, interwebs, <laughs> trying to find how do I do this and how do I do that. And a lot of them really just, even Google, they don't get the fact that if you just go to YouTube, there's all these free videos and everything. So you, if you do your due diligence and give them the resources, then that makes it much faster for them to make money. And that's the point, they just spent all this money. Well, they gotta like, recoup the cost somehow. And a lot of times, they'll be return clients for you or refer other people to you because of your due diligence. So I guess this is where we caught up with a lot of you. To hold hands or not to hold hands, that's actually a really negative thing to think about because you're actually going to be actually holding hands on some level with your client anyway. So, uh, especially like through the proposal period, you gotta explain how your project is going to, how you, what's your solution to get their site done? You know, um, if you're not doing that, then you actually should be doing that in your proposal. In fact, a guy named Troy Dean, if you look up his uh, blueprint on um, making design proposals that can get you $10,000 projects, it, that, is, that is money right there. It, it will step up your game on making your, your proposals. So uh, if you don't like training, it doesn't matter whether you end up doing it or somebody else do it, training should always be in your scope, in your proposal, somewhere. Yes, I thought of my introvert friends, those of you who connect with the grumpy cat, I really understand you. I'm not an introvert, but I have way too many friends who are. You start rubbing elbows with a lot of developers, a lot of them are introverts. So uh, don't make them feel like in this sign right here, like you're gonna like set them on fire for asking questions. And don't make them feel like um, you're bothering, like I'm, if they keep on saying, I hope, I'm so sorry if I'm bothering you and everything. Be up front and tell them and assure them, you're not bothering me, my door is open. You know, like, or, or do what they do in some of the plugin development communities where they're selling premium products. They, they have a knowledge base and everything. Give them a link to that resource. That'll solve it quickly if you can give them a solution. So there's actually two uh, ways that, uh, two angles that you can approach training from is preparing WordPress itself for the actual client. Um, and it cuts out all this confusion. And then preparing the client for WordPress. So on preparing the client for WordPress, basically it's kind of like, uh, Setting it up, you, you want to set them up with like a uh, backup and security plan. A lot of people don't. Whether you end up signing, doing, offering an uh, ongoing maintenance package or uh, signing them up for a service, a subscription service, like for example, Backup Buddy, uh, and making sure that they have a, an item that they can schedule all the backups. Um, that usually works. Sometimes uh, what Manage WP and Main WP and all the other ones that can create backups and everything else, it actually really helps. 
Um, another thing is to declutter to WordPress admin. Sometimes they really don't need certain things in the back end. So uh, customize the back end for the client. Um, you rearrange or create a slim, simpler navigation. The things that they don't need, take away. Um, simplify the WordPress dashboard. Less widgets. Some they really some of, they don't care for them. I mean, you could leave things there, but sometimes when they get in there and they see all this stuff there, they get they're like, <sighs> and cut down on features that the client may not. Apparently, I don't know how to type on here, need when uh, editing at a poster page. If they don't need certain icons and everything that they won't understand, then take them away. So, um, of course, you'll be able to um, get a hold of the slides to be able to click on the links to go to these places and, and check all this out. Um, for coders, uh, in the room, um, you can start with going to the creating admin themes and the codex. And then there's all sorts of plugins, but I listed a couple just to kind of wet your whistles. Um, white label CMS, um, you can uh, take away things like widgets or rearrange navigation. Um, my suggestion is try not to get too fancy with the back end and everything. They don't even care about that kind of crap. They care about using it. And tiny MC advanced, that's you can uh, take away like different icons or um, from tiny MC that they won't need to use, that they won't understand. Like, why don't they need a strike through, or why do they need this, or you know, they're not going to need it. So, I love video screencasts. Um, I actually don't do much on webinars. It's Tiny MC Advance. Okay. And you'll have the slides after this. So video screencasts. Um, if you've customized and decluttered the WordPress admin, no need to team view because you get these people like, oh, can we team view? I get this in Word and Yoast all the time. Um, they won't give us admin access unless we team view with them. And I'm like, uh, that doesn't even do anything for any of us. I can't get on at the same time that you do, and you're in Australia, and I'm here over in the United States. I'm, I'm asleep. So you can actually make a couple short three to five minute videos. And that's actually pretty tolerable for people. You, don't, you only have to video the differences that you made. And then, um, and you can use something cheap like this. Um, when I was dirt poor, and they've actually come a lot. This uh, screencast-o-matic has come a long way. Um, you go in there and you say start recording, and it appears on your browser and everything. I love it. Um, <laughs> and now that I have money, I, I'm happy to pay them fifteen dollars for the pro per year for the pro version. But um, you just pop it in there. As long as you have microphone and everything, you're good to go. The pro version, you can actually kind of make a webinar with it too. You got the link. You said the slides are going to be on your website. Yeah. Okay. Well, she was taking a picture back there. So, so once you actually you uh, film the differences that you've made for the client, then if you, uh, in, if you can either create a video training series yourself. Um, and of course, you have to take into account that WordPress is always changing. So if they change, then you have to change your video too. So uh, aside from the video, you can pop in extra videos that answer like certain questions, maybe like, uh, blogging stuff or making money with WordPress, like even link a resource list. Like for example, a lot of times I have a list of all my presentations that I've done, which usually are to podcasts. So because I repodcast everything I do. 
So the work for the rest of the WordPress training, if you don't do not want to do the training at all, these people are really good. They always keep on top of the service. They're recommended by a lot of the top people, including Chris Lima, WP101.com. They have a usually a, like a hundred and something dollar lifetime uh, subscription. And so basically what you do is, I'm gonna go for, so that's a form of outsourcing it, okay? So basically, char charge it as a concierge service, okay? So you're signing them up for this kind of stuff if they've already agreed to the proposal, so that means that you have it in there, that you're gonna get a subscription to WP101 or whomever you choose. You don't have to just choose them. There are other places too, but I really recommend them. Um, and sign them up with that and then you put your fee, your concierge fee on top of it, okay? So uh, I would recommend using this opportunity to also, for any premium plugins that you have to buy that they need for that project, that would be the time to pop everything of all the charges that they need that need to go in to the whole total price so that you cover yourself and you get paid for configuring plugins and doing all the time to sign up and pay for this stuff too. So don't just put it underneath your account. Have them control it because um, my experience, especially outside of, of these kind of things, give them control over their own stuff. Don't sign them up for premium plugins in your name because they can't get support and you're gonna to have to transfer that license and use extra time to transfer that license to them. Yes, it's easy for me to go and transfer somebody's license, but that means that you had to stop whatever you were doing just to go have that, submit a ticket to go have that done. And then we go punch it, it down and it's a whole freaking process. <clears throat> so going back, how to charge if you're training them yourself. Uh, estimate the hours and multiply it by your hourly rate, basically. Um, and that's just for the individual ones, not for the main training. You're going to have to kind of do kind of like the premium plugin or the premium, you know, model on if you're doing a training that is going to be available to all clients. That's an, like all the different videos for WordPress alone. You're going to have to think of a, uh, of a reasonable price point that you can give them access to an area or make or integrate a plugin to the back end of their WordPress that are, you know, is by you. It's better if you're going to, if you're going to offer their training, you give them a, a, an area that they can access anytime, a membership place, a plugin that they can install into their website, whatever it might be. And, uh, there is actually a free plugin. If you're making your videos, do not reinvent the wheel on the code to make a plugin to get the videos in your back end. Mm -hmm. There is a plugin by the WP Fix It guys in, in the WordPress uh, plugin repository that basically you can actually put your own videos in if you, you, you know, get somebody to code it. So, you don't have to code everything else. You just have to like switch out videos, basically. So that's just an easier solution if, you, if you're gonna do it yourself. And you, of course you wanna add this to, uh, to your scope as part of ongoing maintenance plan. So um, in a way with the ongoing maintenance plan, if they stop, then they no longer get access to the videos. They no longer get access to if included backup plan, um, security plan, or whatever it might be for if you whatever you have to step into to help them with, all that stops altogether. So I'm now for Flores, and uh, you can see me at blondish.net. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. I keep forgetting to put that on my slides. 
And uh, I actually run a 7,500 uh, member WordPress group on Facebook called All About WordPress. Uh, we tackle uh, novice to advanced, all sorts of users and everything, all sorts of questions. So uh, you join it. If you see me on the pin post, you're in the right group. <laughs> Hmm? Yes, I do. I got to update that. Anybody up for a challenge? <laughs> I know this is an experience thing, but how do you estimate the number of hours you're going to need to train that customer based on the size of their complexity of the website, or is it a, kind of a fixed number that you found through your experience? So I have videos and everything. I've gone through the pain of that. <laughs> and I no longer do that anymore. So I flipped all everybody over to WP 101. So in the past, what I did is I made the videos. And because I, I've had a lot of clients over the years, I decided to only like add $100 for each of the clients onto the, their proposal for access to those videos. OK, so that was for me because Yes, I am put more time into it, but I've had so many more clients, so it actually kind of built up over time. Yeah. And they get, they get the support. Oh, the video is not working. Okay, well, I'll see what's going on. So, you know, it assures them that they, get that, they got that access. So, yeah, I, I still answer that question on that bit. So... <laughs> Do you find that your clients actually watch the videos and take the time to do it? They just want to call you anyway. <laughs> okay, so, so here, here is usually my policy. When I get done with a project after they've already been given on their training videos and everything else, they get two weeks of technical support. And only in that two weeks, they only get one hour of consultation time, and it's not to my phone. I do not give them my phone. I do not have got, like Google Voice. I do. I, I refuse that. What I do is I get on, I get on Google Hangouts. It's easy on, especially on this thing, because it's Chromebook, and we just talk. We talk. We go through a team view whenever that is, and they have to give me 48 hour notice that they want that to happen because I'm really busy. I'm doing my stuff and I'm doing stuff for Yoast, so. So that I answer your question a bit. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, because I've looked at WP 101 and yeah. implementing it. But no. I, I personally rather read than, than watch videos. That's yeah, that's why I, I also give people links and everything to certain specific things I've seen people ask throughout the years because of keyword research and everything. And so, like, I will answer those main things right there by doing articles. Like, a lot of them go to my own website. I've already answered it from blogging. And then uh, most of the people, you give them all these videos and everything, and as they're using, they will go to the video based on that area. And they will, they will watch it. I mean, I track these things to make sure, I mean, when they're on my site, because that's where the videos come from, to make sure that okay, then people actually paying attention and everything else. And so where they come from and it referred from their website. So, okay, cool. All right. And then the gentleman looking down. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Well, for my clients and everything, because I go through all of them, pretty much in the same manner and everything. I mean, it's still, I, I build a really good uh, relationship with them throughout the project. I answer any questions during the project. 
Um, I'll encourage them, like if they're trying to learn WordPress a little bit more, sometimes I will uh, tell, uh, sign them up for WordPress.com and tell them, go play with this and you know, like, you know, and I'll give them some teasers to some of my free videos and, and let them do stuff while I'm working on their project, giving them a little sizzle like Gary Vee encourages and everything, you know. So, um, uh, for me, the two weeks of technical support works and one hour of consultation time. If they want more, it's $75 an hour. Can you yes, it's part, it's all in the proposal. Remember, to, anything that's, anything that's outside of your proposal, make sure that that you least, there's two options that you have an hourly rate listed and the option to open a new project. So I don't usually like to do an add-on. I like to open a new project. So. Um, for the very technologically challenged clients, I've had some that want me to set up like their hosting and things like that. And they give me their credit card information. Is that OK? Is that like something you want to avoid? Avoid the, getting the credit card information from them. Put it in your, put, it's concierge service. Yeah. If you're setting it up for them and everything, say, okay, this is part of the proposal. This is how much it's going to be. Uh, and this is what it includes, line item it. This is what the hosting is. Put, get, charge them for a year of a hosting, okay? But make sure when you sign it up, put it in their name. Like, for example, if I sign a client up with, like, Namecheap, I put their email address in there. I, well, first I put mine in first when I sign them up. They send me, through PayPal, the, the, all, the cash that I need. And then I, and then I pay them, sign them up, and then I turn the account over to them. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. Because... Uh, I'm not going to manage their hosting. I refuse to. I've done it for years. I have kicked everybody off my server. I am not dealing with people shutting down my dedicated server because of their irresponsibilities. Like another full -time job, right? Yeah, and I don't, I don't have time for that. I, I want to focus on more helping people, being able to blog, and not dealing with something I don't understand. I know way too much about dedicated servers. I didn't want to learn how to install a memcache. I know how to spell, install memcache on in Linux. It's like not cool with me. I'm like, I just want to do WordPress. <laughs> What's the most common questions that the clients have? So, or well, in, in training? So, I was going to repeat that. Um, so, what's the most common question that clients ask when they are in training? So, are, is it just in general, or are you asking, or is it from? Uh, like, is there any tips that I should expect the clients that typically they'll ask? So, I know how to prep like a starter training guide. Okay, so the most common question says, says, uh, will you? <laughs> they always ask, if I have questions about how to do this, will you let me know? And that's where you like have your own little knowledge base of links and you say, well, if you go to this video, just look that one up in, in, in the membership base for the videos and go to that one and that will answer their question right there. <laughs> but, I mean, that's pretty much all you can do is make sure that, I mean, writing it out completely. If you have a video that's talking exactly like that, just give them the video or give them the article, link to the article. So... Because it's like kind of sucks, like keep on talking about it like a hundred times in a row. And I used to do that a long time ago. Mm -mm. <laughs> Any other? Lady in the back. I think I ate sushi with her like yesterday. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, that's all about like SEO and everything. A lot of stuff about what you put on your website. Uh, I that's it's free. The ebook's free and everything else. I refer my clients to that one all the time. 
as their, when I first build their websites, because I actually focus on that with their websites, um, I give them other things to think about to what they can do after we've already worked together to make sure that they are always thinking about how I should market my site, uh, how can I direct people to these specific things to buy this, read this, share this, subscribe to this. Because that is the main point once you get to, you know, once you release the site to them, that's what they're focusing on. You know, they may not be, they may not be uh, a blogger that actually has AdSense on their website. Maybe they really are a person that they actually have money. And I've known some mommy bloggers that they are rich, really freaking rich. And they just like to share their knowledge and everything. And they've had, in the beginning, they've had a problem trying to get people to do certain things. They didn't have a share button or entice them to click on the next blog post or, or a message, a, a special tip just for their subscribers once a week about something mommy something or some kind of sale out there like, oh my God, you gotta check this out, blah, 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 whatever. But that kind of stuff is what you wanna send to your client if like as an extra goodies. Uh, during the training and everything so that they can start thinking once because they really are just get them focused on making more money with their website I'll send them to my making money with WordPress uh, presentation too that I did here last year so um, it's one of the biggest ones that they love I mean if they're not doing training videos that's the first one that they look at they're like I need ideas what can I do and then all of a sudden they hire me like okay let's do this you know, like, well, my website, how can we do this? And they'll do a consultation with it. So. Have you ever dealt with, like, older clients? Like, really old clients? Yes, really. I, okay, I, I live in a rural community that has a lot of retirement places yeah. in southern Illinois. And um, I, I'm not saying this in the southern way, in the negative way, bless their hearts. <laughs> but I, it, well, ever since living there, I've become more patient with people and try not to like, oh, like if you go to this, you could convert people. They don't even understand that. You said convert, what do you mean convert? Some of you in here may not even know what that means. And that makes me look real like I'm an arrogant. Like, I'm not going to say it out loud, but seriously. <laughs> we can talk a little bit later. <laughs> There's, I'll be in the happiness bar. So if you want to talk about website conversion, we'll talk about it. But uh, what I deal with them, I, get, I just sit down and have, pay, you know, have some patience with them. And I let them know ahead of time that if they want one-on-one -on -one time, they have to pay the hourly rate. I will sit down and lovingly hold their hand for $75 an hour. I mean, it's, it's, it's a matter of, I have, to, I have to put a roof over my head too. And it's my comfort level. You know, am I at 20 bucks? No. 50 bucks? No, 75. For me, I, I know people have like 125 or 250 or whatever their price is, but that's my comfort level for my area. And I'm not, I don't like to screw people over. When you get an hour of my time, I make sure that you feel like you, you spent your money very well. And I assure you that you should be doing that too or they're going to get really pissed. So, in, I have not because I explained to them why, why they should, you know, keep with me and what they're going to get for an hour of their time and everything. And a lot of them, when they actually are referred to my website, especially in my area, it's because of family that I've worked with. 
and they and they may be like only ten years. Their family member I've worked for uh, have are like ten years older than I am, and they were patient enough, and they've sold. They did all my work for me, and usually by that time, you know. Yeah. I've never, if I've had somebody, it's usually because of money, like if they've had money issues and everything, and I tell them, I, I'm, I'm sorry and everything, you know. Um, I know Chris Lemma, you can pay like per the minute and everything with Clarity FM. I decided that it's not worth putting a widget on my website for. It's not, I mean, I've, I've had it a few times, but I have other things to focus my time on than Clarity FM. You know, I answer the questions there to build authority, but I don't want people consulting me through that because I have to pick, that means I have to pick up this, and that, I, I, I don't like my phone. <laughs> I'd rather be on my computer all the time. That's, no, you don't do that. Um, like some do it like uh, there are like, uh, like plugins for their licenses and everything and it's only for installing updates and that's the only type of stuff that they're looking for. A lot of them said, can we track this kind of stuff? You know, like to give you this box. And I have not seen anything in Yoast that, like particular as an example to tell me that they do such and such whatever. I don't recommend it because then you get people who get really pissy like you're like, you know, like NSA or something like that. And you just want to like keep that kind of tracking out. Like I will track on my website for my membership stuff and keep it there so I know what they're visiting. So I know what they're like really curious about. Yeah. But I, I totally take it off of theirs because it could possibly also create some load time on their website. So I don't really want to go into messing with them. Right. I'm an SEO, so yeah. I don't really, I can access Q sites, mm -hmm. the customer, but we are also in there. So is there any way that you suggest, say, you know, people will come back to us and think that we did something. Okay. So there are some plugins in, in the WordPress repository. If you just look it up, it's about, uh, um, something about like tracking admins or tracking something about that. Even if you Google it, it should be somewhere. I can't think of the plugin. I've seen it somewhere. I just can't. It's on. It's. I probably come up with it in 20 minutes, and I'd be like, oh, you know, like that kind of stuff. So, um, I've seen it happen. I, I've seen that them people be, to be able to do that, and it's not an external thing where you're taking that information. From another place, it's all totally in their back end. So, but there are there are I've seen that. Any other questions? <laughs>